Welcome friends. I'm Pastor Corby Johnson and it is my pleasure to be with you again today. We are going through the Proverbs. Slowly, we're taking sections at a time. And if you've missed the last couple, you are welcome to go back on our Facebook page and find them and or go on our website as well, Safford United Methodist Church in sunny Arizona. <laughs> Although today it's a little cloudy and we might get rain. Yay! <laughs> um, so welcome, welcome. Our devotions are available to anybody. So if you want to share, you are welcome to hit the share button. Just make sure you um, say that it's Pastor Corby Johnson's um, devotion. I'd appreciate that. So our Proverbs today is Proverbs 1, verses 20 through 33. And I'm going to read that today out of the New International Version. I will use different versions at times because the richness of Scripture can be defined in so many ways. So many different eyes look at the original scripture and put their own self into it. Sometimes that's good, sometimes it's a little distracting. So I will read several of them and I encourage you to read some as well. And then when we go to study together, just close your Bible or shut down your um, window on your computer and focus on the scripture that version that I use and then we'll go together into the imagine section, the activity section, the action section, and then we have a focus verse. Now I find it's really easy to write the focus verse down and put it on my bathroom mirror, because then I see it, or on the refrigerator, <laughs> or even on my bedside lamp, just so I can stay in the word. And I really believe that the word comes to all of us just a little bit differently, according to where we are in life, what's happening in our world. That's the living word, that it lives in us and through us. What a delight. So thank you for being here today. Proverbs 3, verses 1, or chapter 1, verses 20 through 33. And I'm reading this out of the New International Version, and this is entitled Wisdom's Rebuke. Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. On the top of the wall, she cries out, and the city gates, she makes her speech. How long will you who are simple love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? Repent at my rebuke, then I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings. But since you refuse to listen when I call and no one pays attention when I stretch out my hand, since you disregard all my advice and do not accept my rebuke, I, in turn, will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you, then they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me. Since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, since they would not accept my advice and spurn my rebuke, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. For the waywardness of the simple will die, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. 
that sure brings up a lot of mental pictures, doesn't it? I wonder if any of them niggled at you when you read it or when you heard it. I wonder if we are all in the same boat. I believe we are. I believe we are. So how do we, how do we change our ways? How do we get right with the Lord? Well, I'd like, I'd like you to imagine with me. Imagine you're trying to get a hold of someone. You haven't spoken them to them for a long, long time. And you call and that person's not answering the phone. You're concerned. Days go by and you still cannot get a hold of them. You might call a friend and ask, have you seen my friend? Or you might call one of their family members. Have you seen my friend? Have you heard from my friend? You go to their house. They're not answering the door. Fear grabs a hold of you and you cry for help. You know, this becomes real to us at different times in our lives, especially when our friends are getting aged. When we don't hear from them, it's a fright. Well, with God, it's a give and take relationship, isn't it? It's not one sided. God is not our good luck charm when we have something wrong and we go to God. We go to God in all of our emotions. We go with joy. We go with happiness. We go with confusion. We go to the Lord with confusion. We go to the Lord because the Lord knows all about emotions, knows how we feel, because Jesus has been here in the flesh. And though we want, might want to paint him as, um, as perfect in every way and not needing anything, he was human. And that humanity of needing to be needed or wanting to be needed. For Jesus, it was frustrating because sometimes he really wanted the people to hear what he had to say. He really wanted the people to, to allow him to show them the way. Hmm. So just imagine trying to get a hold of someone and that person's not answering. Just imagine what you would feel like if you were trying to get a hold of Jesus and he was nowhere to be found for you. Oof. Our activity today is uh, listen and hear the warning. This psalm begs us to listen and hear the warning. Are you listening to the voice of direction that God provides? Now, some would say, um, you're hearing God, you're hearing voices. Absolutely. When you go to the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, God will answer in many different ways. God might be that exclamation point. Oh, I get it. Thank you might be that friend that knocks on the door, might be that whisper, might be that inner conscience coming to life. God, God comes, God will, will be here with you. So what is, is in your life that's keeping you away from prayer and relationship with God? First of all, I'd like to thank you for being here and for coming together in the mornings to listen to the word of God through Proverbs. 
But what is in your life that keeps you away from prayer and relationship with God? Think about that. Write some of those things down. This is something between you and God. And our action, today is the day to reconnect. It is. It's easy. You know how you, you pick up your cell phone and you call and you connect with someone? You don't even need your cell phone. All you need is heart and mind and soul. And God will answer. Reconnect. Pour out your heart. And then allow God to speak in that inner voice that only you can hear. A message just for you. Reconnect. Our focus verse today is from Proverbs 1, 30 and 31. Since they would not accept my advice and spurned my rebuke, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. That's a warning to heed, isn't it? Proverbs 1, 30. Since they would not accept my advice and spurned my rebuke, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with their schemes. Well, my friends, when I hear that word schemes, I think of the, the evil of somebody plotting things that are not good for, for us, that are not good for the world, and that damage the heart of the people who plot and scheme. They will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. Ugh. If that doesn't make us turn around, I don't know what will. Turn around and face the Lord today. Pour out your heart and soul to him. For you are God's special child, and he is your amazing God. Until tomorrow, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace.